Uplifted. Y'all, welcome to High Off Light TV. It's your boy, Mike Sick, Barry Halfway. I'm with the first lady of High Off Life TV, Alonda Rich. Yes, yes y'all. This is a family affair, man. A lot of y'all been tapped in for a long time, and y'all may not know what it is. So this is what it is. For clarity for the record. The first lady of High Off Life, Alonda Rich. Mm. What's going on, Queen? What's up? What's up? What's good, bro? Hey, chilling. Hey, chilling. Uh, so far, so good. The new album yes. is out right now. Tell me about the album, the thought process, the music, the feel, the vibe. Right. So, So Far, So Good is a collective of songs that I wrote just about growth and stepping into your power, knowing what you want, and the process of getting through all the things that you go through in life. So. Mm. I'm really proud of it. Um, you I should. Feel like I, I'm proud of it. I'm yeah, proud of it. You yes. know, I need to. I need to hear it. You know, <laughs> but I'm proud of everything that you do because you work so hard and you're you're a born natural. Mm. And um, you know, for as long as I've known you, it doesn't matter what life is thrown at you. You always find a way uh, to get back to the music Ooh. and and just make music. And I'm like, I really admire that. Thank you. You know, I really I do. That. Yeah. I got. Let's let's talk about those three things. Yeah. The first one was stepping into your power. Yes. Talk about how you step into your power and, and, and mm. how one would step into their power, whether it's uh, male or female. Songs like uh, the first song on the EP, The Mantra, um, I basically say, I am her. Um, I had a friend of mine send me a voice note, random voice note, just was, I don't know, maybe a minute or two long telling me, like, you know, you need to realize, like, you're that girl. Like, mm. stop sleeping on yourself. Mm. And it really meant a lot to me because um, people around you don't always notice when you might be going through something mm -hmm. or when you just, you know, you're not as confident as you might be. And I know that particular person, um, he's expressed that I've inspired him a lot with my music and the stuff that he's heard of, of mine. So it was really, it, it, it was a big deal for me because I was like, you know what? You didn't even know that I needed to hear that. Right. Sometimes you just got to remind yourself, like right. you can't rely on other people and wait on them to tell you right. like, what you are. Right. But it's crazy how that works though, right? Mm -hmm. That feedback loop mm -hmm. that you, that you bet on yourself and you, you yeah. pour into yourself. And sometimes, you know, we, we, we do it in a way it's like, everybody's sleeping on me. So I'm pouring uh, to myself. Yeah. Or other times it might be just be like, you know, you got to just, love yourself and just right. cut yourself off from the world but then when you pour into yourself it's like you're recharging your battery and it's mm -hmm. literally power like yeah. that's the power but but what's amazing though what i love is that you pour into yourself and then you get that feedback that you didn't know that you needed they didn't know that right. you needed it uh -huh. and then it all just kind of works out and that's the right. power of music you know what i'm oh, saying absolutely yeah yeah and you don't realize uh how when you are full and like really spreading your light and being in your true authentic self and you're out there in the world how you inspire other people to do that same thing and then they inspire others it's, it's a really cool effect no doubt i want to table that real i want to table the album real quick mm -hmm. come back to it but mm -hmm. on that on that note a lot of people discovered you through through your music on TV show, mm -hmm. um, give me a quick rundown of some of the shows that yeah. that we may have heard your music on, and also, you know, when you're writing for TV and film, this is a big question though. But as you're writing for TV and film, a lot of it is very uh, um, there's a subject or like mm -hmm. a feeling or a mood, yeah. and, I, and I, the music that I've heard, a lot of it is kind of positive, or it's mm -hmm. like you know, like you gotta. I feel like with with film sync or TV sync you have to connect and resonate to an emotion mm -hmm. more so than like go crazy, super lyrical or have something catchy. Yeah. I feel like it has to match the tone of a show. Yeah, so for sure. talk about how your, your music, how you write for it for a, an emotion. Mm -hmm. And do you think that's connected with people for them to connect with you to find your music? Oh, absolutely. Um, so typically what happens is there's a brief or just a description of what, uh, you know, an, a music supervisor or a sync library is looking for, and they're usually pretty vague at times. Yeah. So it'll say they need a sad song, uh, you know, about blah, 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 but they don't tell you really what's happening in the scene. Mm -hmm. So then you, you know, kind of create the song, and I've learned that sometimes it's better to not be so precise. Like in my personal music, like I might talk about, like, okay, well, this person, me and this person went down this path and this happened, that happened, but I might be more vague mm -hmm. just because I think it it makes it easier to fit m multiple scenes versus just that one. So if it doesn't work out, you know, you still have a song that's good for other options. Right. Um, but um, depending on how it gets placed in, in the scene, um, like there's background music. I've had plenty of songs that have just been background music, but then sometimes they'll get placed where like it's like the actors in the show are playing the song. 
Mm. So I have a song, for example, called Okay to Cry. Mm-hmm. And it's just about it being okay to cry. Like, I don't think people hear that enough. Like, it's all right. Like, right. sometimes you, it's okay to be sad and to get through your emotions and to, you know, brush your shoulders off. Yeah. Um. So in uh, Our Kind of People was the show. Um, two of the characters, I think it was the mom and the daughter, they were in the kitchen dancing to, to the song. Mm-hmm. I just thought that was so fire because it was That's, like, oh. it was like the perfect, you know, backdrop and video for my song, basically. Like, I don't even need to do a video, yeah, you know? Yeah. But they were dancing, like, and almost the whole song played, which doesn't always happen. Mm. And uh, I had people messaging me, like, you know, I, I, I needed to hear that, you know, I'm crying right now. Or I've had people tell, some a woman once hit me and said she was going through battle and addiction mm. and the song really spoke to her. So like things like that are very important to me. Um, I try to keep that in mind when I'm writing. Like I, I, I recognize that there's a huge responsibility in what we're saying mm-hmm. as artists. So uh, it's important to me to for say sure. something for, for real. For you know? sure. So what are some shows that your music has been on? My music has been on The Shy, it's been on BMF, Our Kind of People, um, 20s, which uh, is done by Lena Waithe. I absolutely love her. I think she's a fire um, director and show writer. There's a movie called Hip Hop Family Christmas, which is actually one of the first movies that my music has been in. Mm-hmm. Um, Neo was in it. I just thought that I, I grew up like listening to Neo, so that mm-hmm. was definitely a milestone for me. I love that. You've had some placements, too, outside of mm-hmm. the, the sync licensing and, and film and TV. You also have some placements uh, with some major artists, and not just uh, domestically, but abroad as well. You got the placement with Dej Loaf, uh, Benny the Butcher, mm-hmm. uh, the homie in South Africa. Stogie T. Stogie T. Yeah. Talk about these these placements and, and, you know, how you feel about it. Yeah. Go in, but also talk about how, you know, collaborating is nowadays mm. when you're not in, in person and, right. and, you know, but when you get that plaque in the mail, what that feels like. Oh, know? man. So uh, the record was Stogie T and Benny the Butcher. I actually started going down this rabbit hole of making hooks to tracks for beat stars. And um, me and some producer friends of mine, the Kinetics, we decided to just make a batch of them and just to start systematically putting them out. Mm-hmm. So um, the, Animals is the name of the track. It's actually the first one we ever even put out. And um, This is Stokey T, Benny the Butcher, yep. Alonda Rich. Yes, I'm on the hook. So I wrote the hook, sang the hook. Um, so Z, Z Rich of High of Life, mm-hmm. actually with the contacts he has, he thought it was fire and he... He had, had done some, I'm not sure what in what capacity, but I know that he knew Stogie T and his manager to some degree. Mm-hmm. So he was like, this would be fire for him. So he just sent it to him, just, you know, hey, take a listen to this. Yeah. And he loved it and instantly was like, yo, like, take that off Beat Stars. Like, mm-hmm. I have to have that. So we made that happen. I actually didn't know that he was getting Benny on it. Mm-hmm. I was excited enough that Stogie was going to be rapping on it because mm-hmm. he's absolutely fire we didn't know who the feature was gonna be but when it came out i just remember being like yo this is wild yeah. wild like i'm i'm on a track with not only stokie t but benny like arguably two of the most fire mcs out mm. in hip-hop so i love that it's crazy i love that and that let's talk about that because um that is very a, a label didn't place that. Right. Nobody from a label was like, hey, hey, let me get this. Let me get this opportunity. Yeah. I feel like everybody at a record label talks like that. <laughs> like yeah. Everybody talks like Quagmire <laughs> at a record label. You know, we don't talk like that. But um, it's a very DIY mm-hmm. mindset. You know, Super and I've seen you hustle. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've seen you juggle multiple hats. You got to wear mm. two different pants at once. I've seen it. <laughs> um, but talk about that, that, yeah. that, that DIY mindset. And, and do you have aspirations of, of rocking with a label? Or what is, what is this, your dream scenario, um, mm. you know, in the music industry? But let's start at the beginning, though. Talk about the DIY and mm-hmm. maybe what the dream scenario is. So I think it's really important to maintain independence. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that the way things are set up now there's more opportunity for artists to be more independent. Um, yeah, I, I advocate all the time, especially newer artists that are looking to find their sound. Like, you you have to get your own setup. I don't care how cheap it might be or, you know, whatever your budget allows, try to find some way to write and record on your own because mm-hmm. for many reasons. One, like, if an opportunity comes across the table, you can instantly just jump on it. You don't have to wait to go to the studio and, you know, spend your coins right. and all that. Um, but two, like for me, at least I could say it really helped me build my sound 
mm-hmm. and find myself as an artist. Like, you know, the things I like and don't like about my voice or or, or just what I need to work on. What's your dream scenario? My dream scenario. I'm not, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I battle this all the time. I'm not solely, I'm not against, uh, you know, signing to a major label, but I would, it would have to be the right scenario. Mm-hmm. Like, it's really important to me to um, have creative control over what I'm putting out. I have two daughters, and everything I do, whether it's what I wear, the things I say out of my mouth, the way I carry myself, it's important to me that um, it inspires them and doesn't, I don't know, like I, I just, I, I recognize the responsibility that, that those things have. For sure. 